should look at the context of Ex Corte Ecclesiae. So it's written, you know, a um, couple decades after the Land O'Lakes Statement, which asserted a kind of autonomy for Catholic universities. Ex Corte Ecclesiae, I think, presciently saw that, you know, this autonomy would eventually lead to a kind of watering down of the mission of the university. And so it really paints a way forward for Catholic universities. And I think also what's important about it, you know, I, I, we see this in Xu Ying Wang's contribution to the journal where she argues that, you know, there's, there's sort of three options for Catholic universities. There's a kind of pluralistic option, which I think we see at places like Loyola University Chicago, where it's just a big tent, everybody's here, right, and it's great. Um, or we see a kind of exclusivistic option, um, some more um, quote unquote conservative, Catholic universities or evangelical colleges take this option where, you know, there's not, um, you know, there, there's, there's not any kind of engagement with the wider world. And Ex Corte Ecclesiae rightly points us toward engagement with the world. So we cannot take the exclusivistic option, but what we see is an inclusivistic option where we both deepen our identity and engage through that identity with other traditions, cultures, um, you know, mindsets and so on. And so Ex Corte Ecclesiae really points the way forward toward this deepening, both deepening of the identity and engagement with the wider worlds.